Welcome into another special edition of our UCA Summer summer Specials. I'm joined by Jamal Burton and Avery Janin. We're going to be talking about uh, Bears basketball today. So Avery, it's year two. It was year two under Coach Panel's reign. Five win improvement from his first year. Do you think a 500 season is possible next year? Absolutely. I see UCA kind of in the middle of the pack next year. Um, definitely taking almost everything at home. They had a very, very good time at home this year. Uh, home games, more wins at home, obviously, than away. It'll be definitely uh, interesting to see how they feed off this home crowd next year. Um, I mean, the team is really, uh, really good. They're really better than the past seasons also. Um, one thing I admire is them going out and taking some wins on the road because that's really one hard thing to do. I mean, when you're at home, you expect to get wins at home because it's your hometown, it's where your crowd is. Um, Coach always told me when you're at home, you're already up by six. But when you go away, you're down by six. So when you go there, I mean, for them to come out and take some wins when they came off a horrible season, I think they lost, what, 17 games and only won about three? Mm -hmm. Like, when when you have that, that's that's just not acceptable. And so for them to come out this season and win 50% uh, of those games, amazing. So I can really see them coming in next season. And they got a good team. And looking ahead to this upcoming season, they're going to have a big off season Coming into the winter, what do they need to improve on? Um, one thing that I say they need to improve on is more chemistry. Um, I really don't think that the guys really have it all together uh, as a whole yet. Um, you know, you still have Jordan. Uh, he knows his role. He do a lot, especially when it comes to rebounding. But when you have a player like Jordan Howard, which is your guard and which is your scorer, you can't expect him to rebound. So you really have to get some big men up in there that can bang. Um, even if you're not a tree, among trees, you still have to put a body on somebody. So fundamentals is going to be a big key, but they really need players to step up and um, play hard in the paint, but also um, get some rebounds. Like you were saying, yeah, having guys step in there to that four or five position really take that take that rebounding uh, away because Jake Zulhoff was the guy that did that. Texas Titan, man, he he would always go in there. He's vicious rebounding, and you would again, you would see Howard in there. But cohesion cohesion is going to be a big thing in the offseason for this UCA team coming together, finding their their niche, finding their ability to play together, not individually. You know, it's definitely going to help them in this upcoming season. Now, fans got to see Justin Foreman play one season, and they loved him. And he was arguably a leader on this team. How is he going to be missed? How does that, that role get filled now that he's gone? Well, you're going to need someone, again, like uh, Jordan Howard. He's their, he's their big guy, basically. He's their, their top scorer. You know, he's need to be able, he needs to be able to come in there, get his voice heard. He needs to be able to meld with all the guys. He needs to talk to each one of these guys individually, get a connection, bring them all together. If he can do that, you know, it's definitely going to help with Justin Foreman being graduated. Um, you're absolutely right. Um, when it comes to uh, Jordan, you're the general. This is your team, so you have to step up. You have to speak up and let everybody know. Um, when, when I'm on this court, look, listen to me, guys. I'm carrying you all the way. Because right now, even with uh, Justin on the team, Jordan was carrying it. And, and everybody, it's, everybody seemed to love him because when it comes down to the end of the game and you need somebody, who's, who's the ball going to go to? <laughs> Jordan Howard and that's one thing you have to remember but uh, one thing I did I can't say about Justin Former is that you know the three game his heart uh, when it comes to this game you have to have heart uh, even among talent sometimes the heart can win you know you, you heard the phrase uh, it's not about the fighting dog uh, about, about the uh, but it's, it's about the heart and what you do when you step on that court when you step on that court do you leave 110 percent and that's what Justin did. So Jordan is going to have to kind of gather that mentality and learn that from him. And that's what you get from seniors. Mm -hmm. You learn that mentality and you take that and you run with it. And I think he's going to do a really great job. Now, obviously, Foreman graduated and also Jake Zulhoff, big man. You said Texas Titan, Jake Zulhoff graduated. And so do you think Pennell's going to bring in somebody like transfers or freshmen that are going to replace them? Or do you think their replacements are going to come within the program? Well, um, he had, Pennell is, is usually good for uh, 
picking up transfers and uh, you know from JUCOs and also bringing in freshmen. Um, there's actually been a lot of freshmen that's been doing really well. Big man freshmen mm -hmm. in high school. You don't really get that. That's rare. So um, he might find a really good freshman, but I could see him bringing in a JUCO player, maybe from somewhere like Ecclesia College or somebody, or C maybe even CBC. Mm -hmm. Somebody that's been playing, but he needs to get a big man in there that can step up. Right now, they don't really have any much size on the team with other than Jake Zulaw. He was really the only dominant, really dominant player they had. Um, they had one other guy, but um, I mean, when it comes to rebounding, if you have your guard doing most of the rebounding right behind Jake Zulaw, I mean, what much do you have to look for in your program? So you have to bring somebody in. And you know, I could, I'm with you there. There's not much when we have uh, just our players on our roster right now. Tanner Schmidt, he's not bulky like Jake Zulhoff was. Jake Zulhoff, he was, I mean, he was built like a Greek god, you know. <laughs> he, you can't find that kind of size that easily. 6'9", huge build. You know, Albert Christensen's one taller, but he's more of a stretch four kind of guy to me. He's lankier, more of a kind of guy you can throw out in the corner, you can train a few threes. Uh, Tannishman, again, he's not that size. So I could definitely see UCA going out and trying to find someone that'll be able to come in there and really fight for rebounds. And we saw Pennell run a four guard system this year and he's kind of trying to develop a senior into his lineup. Do you think that's gonna work in the Southland Conference this, this next season? I don't know, that's, that's a very uh, interesting thing to look at. Four guards is definitely something you kind of see on some high school levels. Um, seeing it here, I would, honestly like to see two big guys kind of bang around it. So I have a three guard system. Uh, you just have Howard, Brooks, Kamba, then bring in someone and then try and develop Albert Christensen into that stretch four. I can definitely see that, but they would play more of a four out in, in that case. Um, one thing that I'll say is it could work, but <laughs> only if you have a system like the 40 minutes of hell. Like you have to run the whole game. You have to run big man and do whatever you have to do because like when it comes to that, when it comes to that game, um, when you have big men on the court, they can kill you and you can see that. Like when Jake Zuloff wasn't on the court, man, it was really, <laughs> that's when they were really had their down moments. But that doesn't mean anything if that big man can't run with one of your guards. So, I mean, it could possibly work but you have to have um, players who want, who's really in the want to run the whole game, and you have to have a bench that can come in and substitute and give them some rest. So you have to really have a bench that's, that's a continuation that's continued to go. Now, speaking of red shirts, Pennell redshirted several players who played significant minutes in the 14-15 season. Do you guys expect in the 16-17 season, do you guys expect them, those red shirts to have a big impact? Well, um, well, uh, one thing you can look at is that sometimes your red shirt is the player that you need it. Uh, they could be those, play but they just needed some more improvement. Sometimes you red shirt a player just so that you can give them some training or um, maybe get a little bit bigger. Uh, that's one thing. That's probably another solution or resource that they'll have when it comes to big man. Maybe they had somebody that was sitting out, but they weren't big enough. And that's when you use that time. So, I mean, the red shirt can be very uh, useful um, if they've been doing the work that they should have been still working hard, just as hard as the players that's been playing during the, the season. And it, it allows Pennell to be very experimental in the offseason and preseason, you know, having these guys that he didn't work with in a previous season, now having way more options, able to mix up rotations, see how guys score and see how guys defend. It, the important thing there is just finding who is going to get the jobs you want done. You know, if they can get the jobs you want done, they're staying in that rotation. You're f you'll find the guy that wants to do all the dirty work that you want done. Now looking ahead to the season, everything else is in the past. We talked about it. Looking <clears throat> ahead now, 2016-17 season, where do you see them in the Southland Conference standings? I see them, oof, again, middle, middle of the pack. You know, they're they're going to be improved offensively, defensively. They're going to have that experimentation. They're going to be able to find who's going to do the jobs that Pedal wants, who's going to win games for him. Howard's obviously going to be in there. He's going to be changing things up, could be the top scorer in the SLC. But, you know, it's just it's just up to what UCA does in this offseason. Um, when it comes to um, predictions, 
you never really know. Um, one thing I will say though is that um, Jordan really has to do his thing. <laughs> he has to continue. He has to go far and beyond. Like if that means scoring a little bit more uh, and giving up some of his touches, or if that's if he do give up his touches that he really gets his players going. But if he passed the ball, somebody has to step up. So you have to do something with it. But other than that, as far as where this team will be, um, I can kind of agree with you. Um, right dead in the pack. But in order for them to go right over the edge, they really, they really have to play hard, hard and listen to their coach. They play defense. And that's my thing, defense. Now let's defense. talk about one of UCA's opponents every year, and it's always a tough one, SFA. They've made the NCAA tournament the past three years. They had a really good run this year. Mm -hmm. Their head coach, Brad Underwood, he takes off to Oklahoma State, coach the Cowboys. Does the absence of Underwood allow UCA to possibly come in and win this game? You know, um, I don't see that. I, that's still such a great team. You barely yeah. had anyone leave from that team. They, it's the same guys they dealt yeah. with this year. So it's definitely going to be a hard-fought win. They have a chance to win it here if they're able to fire, fire out on all cylinders, take, take this, just take the game into their hands, uh, find, find who's going to score. At SFA, that's going to be that's going to be the real challenge. They would have to be on an elite level that night to take that. When it comes to it, when it all boils down, <sighs> it can happen. Anybody can win on any given night, okay. but you have to step in there and you have to step up and do your job. Every player on the team, when you step on that court, you got to know, I'm going to do my job, whether that's rebounding, whether that's dropping your butt and playing some defense, whether that's taking a few extra shots and having confidence in that shot when you do it, or whether that's just giving your all running down the court uh, mm -hmm. to get back in there and taking that charge. You have to do whatever it takes to when it steps on that court to beat the next team. And whoever your opponent is or whoever is facing you, you have to be the best man when it comes out of that fight. So, I mean, I, I'm i rolling with them, but they really have to work hard. Yeah, yeah, and they play an 18-game 18 conference, 18 game conference schedule next year. Pennell, his high in the Southland Conference is six wins. What's realistic? How many wins are realistic uh, for them next year? How many wins are realistic? Um, I, again, I was saying this earlier, he, they can take everything at home. Yeah. I think they have a chance of taking everything at home, being able to just feed off of the mm -hmm. home crowd. They did a great job about that this year. We'll definitely, we'll definitely see. Um, I'll just give you a percentage. How about yeah, that? Yeah. I'll say 60%. Okay. And that gives them that little bit that they need to sweep, the, to go through the conference and make it. And that's, that's going to be their determination between the NCAA tournament. That's where I want to see them at when it all ends. But in order for them to get there, they have to come one by one, every game, playing hard. Good lead into my very next question I was going to ask you. Are they going to make the Southland Conference tournament this year? I, th I think so. <laughs> yeah. I think so. I think they have a chance. Now, what they do in there is mm. a whole different beast. Um, they haven't seen it in a mm. little bit. So um, it'll be definitely very interesting how they'll react. They have a chance to take maybe one or two games. But winning it all, that would be that, – that's a Cinderella run right there. Yeah. Um, I won't quite say the Cinderella story, mm -hmm. but one thing that I will say – is that, like I said before, anything can happen. And one reason that they probably didn't have a motivation, because even if they played hard this year, they weren't going to be able to go to the tournament anyway. Even if they qualified, mm -hmm. they weren't qualified to go to the tournament. Yeah. So now that they have an opportunity, yes. Because yeah. now you have something to fight for. Yeah. So it, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like uh, a baby with a piece of candy in front of it, their face. I mean, if the, if the candy is not there, there's no reason for the baby to go in that area yeah. other than to, to wander. Yeah. But if, you, if the baby see what it wants, the baby is going to go get it. <laughs> you see what I'm yeah, saying? Because yeah. it's, it's like a prize. And now they have a prize that they can um, fight for. Yeah. And so I, I'm really hoping that they go for that prize. <laughs> me too, me too. I think we're going to see them in the tournament. I think they're going to do very well. Well, thank you for your input, Jamal. Thank you, Avery. We're going to go to commercial break. When we come back, we'll have Sugar Bear basketball for you. Stay with us. Ah, <sighs> college. The University of Central Arkansas. Student activities are a blast. We did so much on and off campus. UCA is where I learned to push myself made new friends. 
That's where I fell in love with business and finance. And fell in love. It's how I got here. Go here, go anywhere. Go UCA. Welcome back in here. We just talked about men's basketball. Now it's on to women's basketball. They had their best season in program history. They took the Southland Conference. They made it to the NCAA tournament. Out of everything you could pick from, what stood out to you most about the Sugar Bears this year? Their composure. They were able to just fight through so much, I wouldn't say adversity, but there was so much trying to attack them in a different way. They were able to make the NCAA mm -hmm. tournament, took the SLC tournament. That's huge for this program, and these girls definitely deserved it. Well, you know what I'm about to say. <laughs> Defense. Um, like I always say, when offense fills the stands, defense wins championships. What did these girls win? A championship. They didn't go all the way in the March Madness tournament, but they got a taste of it, and that's because they played defense. And, you know, if you can stop another team from scoring, even when you can't, you did your job. And these girls did an outstanding job with playing together, talking to each other on the court, because that's a big component. And, I mean, you can't really do any better than that. Yeah, you know, I agree. staying together, like you said, with composure, fighting through everything, but playing defense. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Was there a point in the season where you just said, okay, yep, this team's going all the way, they've got it figured out? I said that when I first saw them. Yeah. Like, um, I actually was um, a practice player for them. Mm. And just practicing with these girls, like, you would think that I'm, these are girls. You know how mo not every guy thinks that way, but some guys are like, yeah. man, these are girls. These sure, are, yeah. they, they're yeah. tough. And <laughs> one thing that I love about them is that it, from, the, from the coaching staff to every player um, in that gym, they stay on one accord. They pray together. They um, – they practice, they go out to eat together. It's not just when they're at work, but it's outside of work. Uh, also when they're building their chemistry. And that's that's another thing that I really uh, admire about them. Mm -hmm. And so I just knew from the beginning that mm -hmm. this was gonna be a great team. Mm -hmm. I knew they had it. I think our first broadcast is when I went in there, I was like, these girls are going to go far. We went in there and uh, seeing Olivia McWilliams hit those game winning free <laughs> throws, I was like, that, com that takes so much composure. That was from a freshman to just go out there and knock down those shots casually. Three shots. I was like, these girls are special. You know, and again, talking about the chemistry, they their team chemistry is borderline flawless. They always, I always will see them around campus. They're mm -hmm. always together. The, this team next year is going to be maybe even scarier. I think <laughs> so. I hope so. Now, on three separate occasions last year, they went on nine-game win streaks. What made them so dominant? Defense, defense, defense. I'll go with Jamal on this. Their defense is so solid. They get into people. Yeah. You have a great, great rim defender in Raquel Logan, the Rock. <laughs> yes. She will go in there, and she will pack things right into the other stands. She was such, such great. She, excuse me. She did such a great job inside. And then you have a great... Uh, perimeter defender and Sandy Jackson, mm -hmm. big girl, always able to get out there and just push, push smaller guards just off of the line, put them way back and not in a position to attack at all. <laughs> well, what I'll say is, I mean, first and foremost, you have to give credit uh, to two of the players that carry the team, and that's your general, which is Brianna Mullins, mm -hmm. Bree, and um, which is a jack of all trades, that's what I call it, because she can yeah. do so much. She actually was right behind um, right behind Rock and Taylor with uh, still she was third on the team in rebounding. Mm -hmm. It's your guard. It's the same thing like Jordan Howard. It's your Impressive. guard. Get in there. Also, you have Maggie Profit. Mm -hmm. Making Profit, baby. That's our, that's our <laughs> motto. Making Profit, baby. Because Maggie, she steps out. And if you can get Maggie going, the rest of the team is going. And when she's getting buckets, everybody else is stepping up, doing their job. And like you said, Rock here, Logan. Rock. Rock, rock. Like, you can't get enough of it because when she first started, she was a little timid. But when she figured, like, she she transformed into her nickname, Rock. Mm -hmm. And that's when she really started stepping up because you, I wouldn't want to go up against her because I know she's going to swap my stuff. <laughs> she's going to send it to the bleachers and everybody is going to laugh. You see what I'm saying? It's like, I mean, by this team, you know, they have so many special components, special elements yeah. on a team. Everybody has a little piece and everybody brings something to the table. Yeah. That That's a true team. 
Yeah, that's I a agree. true team. I agree. And they lost three seniors. Now, who fill, or who leaves the biggest void with those seniors being gone? I'll have to. I'll have to say, it's it's always going to be um, this. It's always going to be the big man position with them. Mm -hmm because they don't really have big girls, so they always have to have um, guards step up. <laughs> and so I really say that, that that's where they're going to be missing out. But they, then again, they're not going to be missing a lot because the guards always carried the team. Yeah. And they always always had shooters. You know how many more guards they have in their bench? Like, their depth is it's so deep. It's, it's really no it's really no deep. They're, they're not going to be hurt regardless. I think... Out of all of them, the one that hurts the most, I think a little bit goes to Kendara Watts. She was such a, a great shooter, almost shooting 50% from mm. the three-point line over the season as, as, as their, I guess, their four. And, you know, that's huge. She was such a, she was a smart shooter. You and mm. I have talked about this. She is an absolutely smart shooter when it came out there. Always got good shots in, though. Uh, Jamika Watkins, that's another one just going to hurt that's leadership that's gone there it's 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 going to make an impact but not one enough where it's going to throw them off who replaces these seniors next year does that come from within or does that come from freshmen coming in to replace them i think that comes from within mm -hmm. i definitely think that comes from within i think they have the players that are able to step up and take this um obviously watts really didn't start over the season Jamaica Watkins did start over the season, so you'll have to find someone, someone like uh, Olivia McWilliams, be able to step up, play outstanding defense, able to find a lot more consistency in her shot, find a way to throw defenders off, and be able to score a lot more, able to contribute with Maggie Profit. Mm -hmm. uh, most definitely, Olivia Williams, oh, for um, the guard for Jamaica Watkins, because she did, like you said, she did a great job stepping in at the end of the game and making those free throws. And I mean, just speaking with her, you know that she's really serious about ball. She was a actually out for um, a season because of her uh, ACL, mm -hmm. but she came back strong, and that's something to come hard, come back from. And um, but for big man, for Kendara Watts, I would have to say Taylor Strickland, because that is a big body, and that's the body that you need in the paint. Like when she stepped, the last game she played against. Um, Houston, um, I'm talking. She she just went off. Mm -hmm. She got in the paint. She was uh, bad. And and her challenge, six three. Taylor is like five seven. So her going against that's that's like David and Goliath. But mm -hmm. but for her to step in there and continue to bag bag her down, uh, having faith in her confidence and faith in her shot when she took it up and working hard. Uh, boxing out, fundamentals. She's really big on fundamentals. Mm -hmm. uh, fundamentals will beat um, talent any day because you, you're playing smart. When you put a butt on somebody, you can't jump over me if I got my butt and I'm boxing you out. And so that's one thing that I can really say about her when it comes to big man. So those spots will be filled. Mm -hmm. they, they won't miss, they'll miss that talent, but they won't break down as a yeah. team because yeah. they have so much talent that can fill those holes. And now off season is in full swing. What do they what does the team need to do during this off season to maintain this winning culture cuz they they're riding high right now. How do they stay on the high? Well, um, I would say that they need to go ahead and schedule some games against some more bigger teams mm -hmm. because early in the season they they played Tennessee. I mean, they got beat bad, but that helped them. They oh, yeah. they gave them some drive. So they need to schedule some more games against bigger teams like that. But also they need to stay in the weight room, stay in shape, keep running. Like because you have this this game is nothing but running. I mean, it's it's if it wasn't basketball, it'd be track. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So I mean, you have to. I mean, even in high school, I felt like I was running more in uh, basketball than I did when I was on yeah. the track team. Yeah. So <laughs> you have to stay in shape, mm -hmm. and they have to continue to meet outside and just keep that chemistry up because that's one thing that kept their spirits up. Because when one player was down, they was all down. But when one player was up, they were all up. Yeah. And just keep that chemistry between the team and the coaching staff. Just, just improvement from some of your younger players. Obviously, Olivia McWilliam able to come in and provide a bigger scoring punch this upcoming year. Uh, definitely scheduling some bigger teams. I would actually enjoy seeing maybe some uh, UCA versus Razorback ladies. That would be very fun. I would actually give that game to UCA. <laughs> <laughs> 
But, you know, I would definitely give UCA, uh, they already have their chemistry, but whoever comes in, they need to make them feel welcome. Mm -hmm. Whoever their new uh, players, they come up inside, they have to make them feel welcome. They have to make them a part of their team. And if they can, uh, if they can make them uh, part of the team, have everyone on the same page, they're going to be golden. What are some areas that the team needs to improve on in this offseason? Oof. That's, that's there's consistent scoring and keeping a better hold on the game. They, they've they let a few games uh, go, get a little, get a little, excuse me, a little bit out of hand. And so with that, it's it's made it a hard time for them coming back, especially one of some of the later games in the season. They were having trouble uh, holding on to the game and trying to come back or coming back way too late. So them doing that would be absolutely great for their mm -hmm. Also, I would say um, working on um, being able to play the whole game without uh, a doubt because they are a second half team. Mm -hmm. So that's when they really get the pushing. And like you said, Avery, sometimes in the first half, they can really let it go. And that's when they're down. So really teams could have beat them this season if they held on in the second half. But the second half, that's when they're really, they're really drilling. So um, one thing I would tell, I would want them to work on is staying consistent throughout the game. Mm -hmm. Because in the first half, I mean, if they're down, sometimes they would, Sometimes they would not step up until Coach Russian was red in the face. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I would not want to be in front of Coach Russian <laughs> when she's red in the face. But, I want, but one thing I can say is it helps because after she fuss, she loves. And if, if the coach is not fussing at you or if the coach is not consistently on you, they don't care about you. Like they, that lets you know that they're there. They love you. They know that you're special and you're going to do something. So they have to continue to work on that consistency because if they can do that first half and second half, who's going to mess with this team? I, I guess nobody. I hope nobody. And I really, I really, I feel like even watching them in the Louisville game, mm -hmm. they played hard. They, they stuck with them and then it kind of drifted off because mm -hmm. they lost their consistency. Yeah. But I really feel like this team has the ability to go all the way. And I really want to see a March Madness championship because oh, I'm going to be, be cool. there. I don't know about <laughs> you, you oh, guys. I'll be there with you. I'm crazy. Be there. <laughs> now, we're filming this in April, and I want, I want a prediction out of you guys. Can the Sugar Bears repeat 11 months from now? Yes. Yeah? Most definitely. Good. Oh, definitely. I'm, I'm going with him on they have a chance. I think they have a chance to make, again, a great run in the NCAA tournament. And maybe maybe with a little better seating next year. <laughs> I actually, actually, I'll, I'll take it a step up. I'll one up that. They're not going to repeat. They're going to mm -hmm. overachieve. Ah, I like that. I like that. <laughs> They're going to overachieve what they did. This, this, was, this was just a seed. Yeah. They're going to be the flower. I like that. I like that. Now, this season ended Coach Rushing's fourth season at the helm of the Sugar Bears. Where does she take the team in the next four? <laughs> Well, seeing how she's, as, as you were talking about, she gets red in the face with these girls, but she's always someone that's able to inspire these girls. It's part of the part of the charm that came with them being down in the first half, and then she would get in her players' <laughs> minds. Yeah. And then the second half, they would go and destroy another team. You know, she has that ability, and I think this year she has a chance to... Uh, she has a chance to not deal with that. Mm -hmm. Some of these girls can, if they can make that in, that consistency, yeah. they can really, she can really have a, just a good time coaching, to maybe for mm -hmm. once. Yeah. Uh, one thing I'll say is, her coaching ability is outstanding. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about Maggie Prophet mm -hmm. and the things that she's been doing, the records that she's getting so close to. She, she was about to do this in three years, and which it took other players four years to do. Yeah. So, I mean, we, sometimes when you have talent, everybody doesn't use the talent that they have on their team. Or some people just don't. They, they have it, but they just don't know how to make the players push into their full potential. Mm -hmm. Sandra, she, she, Coach Rush, she has that. And she's really, she's, she really works hard. And one thing I admire about her is that everything that her team do, she's always there. She's always involved. She's right there in the middle of it. And, I mean, she, she has a bright future also with this team. Mm -hmm. And, like I said, that's just the start. 
Yeah. They pl they planted the seed. Yeah. <laughs> she's she, they're gonna be the plant, but she's gonna have a whole garden. I'll say that. See, I agree with you. I think it's very very good to have a coach player relationship, or uh, obviously a professional relationship, but to have good chemistry with your players, understand your players, and know what they're doing, is it's, that's invaluable. Now, when it comes down to it, season shows up. Bold prediction from both of you for the Sugar Bears next year. We'll start with you. Bold prediction? Bold prediction. I say that the Sugar Bears, matter of fact, I give them, <laughs> I give them Elite Eight. Oh, Elite Eight? I give them Avery? Elite Eight. Well, you took, me, you took that one away from me. I was going to say <laughs> Elite Eight. Um, I can see Maggie Prophet. I said this with Jordan Howe earlier. I can see Maggie Prophet going for big, big money, mm. going for maybe 40, 45. I can see her definitely just going off in the three-point line next season. Elite Eight? Yeah, I can see them going to the Elite Eight. How cool would that be if they oh, ended up be in the Elite It would be <laughs> so amazing. I'm, I'm, I will have Talk about Russia being successful. That's the yes. way to do it. Yes. <laughs> and yes. In her fifth year, that'd be pretty cool. But And that will also be outstanding because that will mean that Maggie has broken a record. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's very true. That's very true. Well, thank you guys for your opinion. I'm your host, Taryn Meyer. Thank you to Avery Drannon, Jamal Burton. That was Sugar Bears Basketball. Talk, see you guys next time.